kicking things off today, wanted to talk about The Devil All the Time, the new Netflix original film that stars Tom Holland, Sebastian Stan, Robert Pattinson, and Spill Skarsgård. And this is a movie that I was aware of, and I thought I, I was going to try and watch it before the end of the month for my end of, you know, each month I do my rankings. But then after it came out, I was actually just kind of pretty surprised and shocked by the number of requests I've gotten from people to review this movie. And therefore, I, I just found a way to check it out last night with my wife, which uh, left both of us deeply, deeply <laughs> depressed. And... Um, so this is a tough one for me to review because it's not really my normal thing. I tend to be an escapism kind of guy or a movie that kind of has a more kind of clear message or a movie that kind of ties t to something. And so tragedies are not the movies I naturally gravitate towards. So I watched it and I could be like, wow, there's a lot of interesting things happening. And I was fascinated by waiting to see what the next horrible thing to happen to these characters was. But it's not really a movie that I can say that I, I really enjoyed watching. For the most part, I didn't enjoy it, and I didn't feel like I got something out of it. So I could respect a lot of the craft that went into it, certain interesting things as you're watching it, and you start to realize how the different plot lines are coming together. But at the same time, when I'm watching a movie, just thinking to myself, like, oh, I'm just, I'm just sitting here waiting for the next bad thing to happen to these characters. And it got to a point where it was predictable because you could predict what was going to happen in a scene because you would just think, what's the worst thing that could happen in light of this information? And that's the exact next thing that would happen in the movie. That It's just not the thing that I naturally gravitate towards. And so it's a film that I'm, I'm giving my kind of thoughts on because so many people ask me to. It's not one that I I'm necessarily would have thought to put a review out Otherwise, Griffin, where did you fall on this one? I really liked it. Um, I, I actually loved uh, I Do you need a, a good cry from time to time? <laughs> like just need to work. Well, OK. Have you have you seen the uh, the Derek Chianfrance film, A uh, uh, Place Beyond the Pines with Ryan actually Gosling? Haven't, no. Mm -mm. OK, so yeah. it reminded... that was like right in the window of time where I had newborn babies. Oh, OK, so I like I almost saw nothing besides Marvel movies at that point in time. Right. Just because I didn't see anything. Yeah, so th this movie kind of reminded me a lot of that film where it's sort of dealing with just like generational um, trauma and the lessons we pass down to our kids and like how sometimes their upbringing can like shape their view on like, you know, religion and and and, and stuff like that. Um, and so like, I, I don't know, I thought there was just like a lot of really interesting sort of like thematic exploration going on that I really just dug, but like, yeah. it's also just incredibly depressing. And, and like you said, bleak and just, um, it's not like for everyone for sure. It's a really tough watch, but it's like incredibly well acted. Um, it, it is to me like an actor's showcase for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I thought like there was they were just tackle they were hitting on some really interesting like topical stuff when it came to like small town America and um and and faith and, and, and whatnot that I myself could personally relate to. So it's like that part of it was where I was like, okay, this is this is interesting. And like literally it didn't matter like where Tom Holland's character went. Like literally the like the devil was in everything. The devil was yeah. all around him. Uh, no matter how hard he tried to escape it. And the, the interesting thing about it was that like he as a, I don't want to say he was an atheist, but he was like more of a less, he was less, um, uh, into religion because of his upbringing than right. like everyone else around him. He ended up being like the, uh, the voice of reason. Mm -hmm. And so like, it was definitely trying to comment on religious fanaticism in these like small towns, which, which is definitely very, uh, uh, timely for sure. But I can also see how it's all, it can be very off putting, uh, right. to, to, you know, people who are like very, um, wh where faith is a big part of their lives. And I think this is coming from a very, jaded and cynical uh, right. point of view on that. That being said, um, I, I, I also... I'll, I'll just oh, go on ahead. that yeah, real yeah. quick. Like, I think that's even part of what... For, uh, like, I saw the trailer and I went, this isn't going to be a good movie for me, because very clearly from the trailer, you get the idea that this is all about religious wackos in the small yeah. town. If you're unaware, I was a pastor for eight years, 
And I, you know, I didn't come from circles, anything like this. And so then anytime there's a movie that a lot of people are going to watch that presents Christians, uh, it, it, like all the Christians in this movies are fools, wackos, psychos are all three. Um, right. You know, pastors are presented as the wackiest of crazy. And obviously those people are out there. Uh, and I'm in no, no way denying that. And anyone that is doing any of the stuff these people are doing, fully denounce it. But then when they're all presented that way, like I see it, I, like that's the frustration for me of like, yeah, yeah. It, um, I don't gravitate towards those stories because I don't resonate with them. They don't reflect my actual experience in church world whatsoever. And so then I, I have more frustration in some of it's the baggage that I bring into it. That's kind of the opposite of the the cynical view that that's here. Right. And someone has these cynical views because they experience things like this. Understand that, but that's not mine. And so then I'm watching a movie that's just really depressing, yeah. acted very well, which adds to the depression. And then it likewise, it just it's re it's representing people that can be associated with me in the worst possible way. Like, you know, I, I was never oh, for sure. Yeah. Never in a church service where a guy poured uh, spiders all over his face. Right. So, uh, right. Um, or his later plan to test his faith. <laughs> Um, I proposed that one to yeah, my wife yeah. and I told her I wouldn't be a good husband or a person of faith because I would be unwilling to, to behave in that manner. And uh, she was OK with that. But it, that, that stuff to me, I obviously would have a sensitivity to it. But I'm sorry. What sure. was your final thing you're going to say on this one? No, but I, I, I was going to say I feel like um, the the. The reason that whole aspect, because I agree that part could I, I can understand like that, that being a little bit of a touchy area for people. I think why it worked for me was because they said it in like post uh, World War Two America where that yeah. stuff was like, you, you know, West Virginia and like the backwoods and stuff like that. Like this was clearly like an area where that stuff would sort of happen um, and uh and whatnot. The, the only thing I didn't really like about it was that uh, the structure, it, it felt like a book, like a literal right, book, right. And especially with the narration. The narration. Which, it, yeah. It, it kind of plays like chapters. You follow a character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The window where I was like, oh, I guess Tom Holland isn't really the star of this because it was following all these other characters. And then yeah. he comes back to him and he very much is the, the person. And that was the thing. Whenever it went away from Tom Holland to uh, uh, Jason Clark and uh, Riley Keough and Sebastian Stan, I just I, I didn't care about what was going on there. That wasn't the interesting thing to me. Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing was that they were trying to use art in order to like feel vindicated or or whatever in their beliefs, but whatever. But like it just wasn't. It it felt so detached from the central narrative that I was like, eh, can we just get back to Holland and Robert Pattinson? That's where the interesting part of this is. And so yeah, that's it's it's tough for me because it's a movie where, like, I don't want to say like oh, it was a bad movie. I don't want to say right. people shouldn't check it out because it's a like if they're like excited for it. You should watch it. If, like you watch the trailer and think that's for me, then you should check it out. Yeah. Everything that I'm saying, it's a negative. I watched the trailer and I went, I wouldn't watch this. And that's even some of the language I tried to use in my reviews of a lot of like, if you watch the trailer and you thought I, I would like that, that this is the case of a movie where I watched the trailer and went, I'm not going to, I don't think I would like that. I don't think my wife would like this. And we didn't. But if you watch the trailer and thought, Ooh, dark, grim, man, I think I'll be into that. Um, yeah, yeah. Then, then go for it. So I, I don't even know what letter grade I would give it because I'm just, it's like one of those movies that just feels so out of my, my range, but I have, I feel like I can't really go positive on it. So I'd, I go like a C plus where it's like, I can acknowledge all the goods, but I do not, I did not enjoy the experience. I, didn't feel <laughs> like I got something out of it. So I can't give it a positive review to a movie that kind of falls into that ballpark. 